There's one special case about AC circuits that I want us to know about, and that is the case when the inductive and capacitive reactances essentially disappear. Even though there might be inductors and capacitors in the circuit, they cancel one another in terms of their voltage drop, and it is almost like the circuit only has a resistor. This is called circuit resonance. Remember that the current amplitude is related to the voltage amplitude through this relation I0 equals V0 over Z. Whenever Z is at a minimum, then I0 will be at a maximum. That's the most current you can get out of the circuit. If you remember, then the, the impedance for the circuit is the square root of R squared plus X sub L minus X sub C squared. These are the inductive and capacitive reactances. If we could choose the elements of the circuit so that X sub L equals X sub C, then the second term in impedance goes away, and Z, Z would be uh, just equal to Z equals R. That's the smallest possible value we can get for impedance of a circuit. The X sub L and X sub C are defined as X L equals omega L and X C equals 1 over omega C. How can I get them to be equal? Well, I could just set them equal. Where Remember, omega is the frequency of the voltage source. So if I set these two things equal, then I find out that they would be uh, equal to one another whenever omega squared is 1 over LC. That's a particular choice of the, of the frequency at which I would drive the circuit. This particular frequency is called the resonant frequency, omega sub r. If you slowly dialed up and down the driving voltage frequency, you would find that the impedance z grows smaller and smaller until you got to the frequency of this so-called resonant frequency. And at this frequency, omega sub r, z takes on the smallest possible value, z min equals r. And as a result of making z take on this minimum value, you will make the current amplitude take on a larger value of v naught over r. If we adjust the frequency of the, dri of the driving voltage source to be omega squared equals 1 over LC, uh, that's called the resonance frequency. And what you would see f as a function of the uh, driving the voltage frequency is a graph that looks like this. You'd see current amplitude graphed on the, on the vertical axis versus angular frequency at which you're driving the circuit, omega. And a very particular thing would happen when omega equals omega sub r. That's when the current would be largest as, as it could possibly be. But there are some special cases to be thinking about at uh, different values of resistance. Remember that when omega is less than omega sub r, we'll have x sub l less than x sub c, and the impedance will be big, and the, the impedance will be bigger than its minimum value of r. As a result, the current amplitude won't be all that large. When omega is greater than omega sub r, we'll have x sub l greater than x sub c, and again, the impedance will be larger than its minimum possible value of r, and as a result, the current will not be as big as it could be. But it's right at omega equals a, um, omega r that we'll have x sub l equals x sub c. They cancel each other in the impedance, and the impedance takes on its minimum possible value of resistance. As a result, the current amplitude will be the largest it can possibly be. For omega equals a, omega r, the value of the resistance actually impacts the current amplitude. If you think about it, when r is really big, then even though z is at its minimum possible value, it's still a pretty big number. And then the current amplitude can't be all that big, even at the resonant frequency. For really small values of resistance, then that means that the z uh, impedance can get pretty small, and the resonant uh, current that comes out can be pretty darn big uh, at that particular driving voltage. So again, the general expression for z is square root of r squared plus x sub l minus x sub c squared, and that's going to help us predict uh, the voltage, uh, the current amplitude that comes out of a particular voltage amplitude, and it's also going to help us predict this phase delay of the current, where phase delay, remember, is calculated by a tangent of phi is x sub l minus x sub c over r. At the resonant frequency, when omega squared equals 1 over lc, then we have x sub l equals x sub c, and in this special case, at resonance, the phase shift is zero degrees. This means that the current oscillates in time with the voltage. There's no time lag whatsoever. 